I, I don't think the perception of what an HPM really is about or what can, what they can offer is actually that, that readily accepted within sports. And I still think it's a developing um, profession that way altogether. Um, what do you mean by that? Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. My name is James Grigson, and today I'm joined by Jeremy Hickmans. Jeremy is uh, a long time high performance coordinator, head of high performance um, programs across rugby league, specifically, most notably at the Broncos, had a stint at the Dragons, and also looks after the, the high performance program for the uh, English rugby league um, uh, as well. And uh, currently working as a consultant for, for Swimming Australia, and, and you have your own. Um, you know, set up there with the, the Apex Project, Jeremy. Yep. Um, firstly, yep. thank you for coming on. I understand you're in Mackay at the moment. Uh, the work that you're doing at the moment with Swimming Australia, is that through the, through the Apex brand or is that just from a consultant role there? Um, yeah, pr pretty much through a consultant role. It's, um, I'm trying to develop the Apex brand at the moment. So the swimming probably came on prior to that. Okay. Um, so, so yes and no is probably the really bad answer to that one. I'm curious about the Apex brand because uh, I sort of, you know, I was going through, um, you, like I said, I, I listened to a few um, podcasts of yours in the past and um, understand some of the posts that you made on social media. It was almost like a, an, an idea that, that came to you and you went, all right, I want to I I start doing my own thing and have my own consultant brand. Why after, you know, the, the tenure that you've had in the industry, make that switch and that pivot to, ha to have your own brand? Are you able to talk through that? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, the, the very simple answer is we're sort of forced to. Um, yeah. There was myself and Tanner Scott, who's, uh, you know, used to be with us at the Broncos, now working down at um, uh, New South Wales Rugby League and Uni of New England. Um, we were forced to by getting sacked, basically. Right. So it's, um, it, you know, it's something that we talked about for a long time. Um, and, you know, as per any job, you know, you're very busy and you just keep going and, uh, you know, we did a lot of talk about it, didn't do anything about it. And then when you, when you put it in a position where you've got to do something about it, you actually get off your backside and, and think, oh, well, actually, I need a plan B. Um, and it's also something I find very interesting is just that, that uh, you know, ability to go into different sports and look at different environments and, mm. and learn from different people, which is, um, that, that's been a real blessing over the last couple of years, that ability just to get out of your own little, um, your own little box and your own little environment and say, you know, what are other people doing and you know, what can I do better for myself, really? And, and you mentioned sort of you were almost forced to have to, to, to make that jump and, 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 you know, set up something. I've heard you in the past, you've been quite, I guess, vocal or transparent about the, um, the in, interesting elements or interesting parts of, of the industry and maybe how, uh, how cutthroat it can be at times um, and, and, you know, how, how it can jade some people. How, how, I guess, how would you best describe being able to, having, you know, being someone that's sort of on the end of that real cutthroat um, decision-making, yeah. how would you best describe your, your thought processes and, and either maybe how that shapes you moving forward or mm. how you dealt oh. with it at the time and maybe how you would have done it, done it better? No, absolutely. I mean, look, look I was uh, looking back now, I was probably very naive. I've been very lucky in that, you know, I've gone through a period of 13, 14 years without really that you know, experience in that. And, you know, talking to a lot of people after it happened, you know, just about everyone sat there and said, oh, yeah, when it happened to me and when this happened to me, and right. it's just part of the business. Um, and as you say, I've been vocal in the, from, from the fact that, you know, I don't really know whether it should be part of the business, whether there's an easy mm -hmm. way around that. Um, and the lack of support as an as a profession that we actually receive around around these kind of things, you know, it's just it's just seen as something that happens, um, rightly or wrongly. You know, it, it's, it is very cutthroat, um, but I think there's I think there's got to be a safety net there. So so as I say, I think I was I was very naive in the fact that I'd gone I'd sort of gone through without having to worry about it, yeah, and um, never really set up that plan B. And it's something that's really changed my mind now. So. You know, look, I'm, I'm not quite sure where the future is going to take me right at the moment. Um, you know, sort of, sort of slightly different and working within different sports. Um, you know, if, if a, a rugby league club came back, would I go back into it? I'm not so sure at the moment. So, you know, enjoying that sort of that difference, but it would also be tempting to get back into the week-to-week -week grind, which, you know, it, it is exciting That's when cool. you're in. Yeah. Um, but I would always have that plan B now. And I think it's just something that you have to, 
you, you have to have that safety net for yourself. Um, and, and let's be honest, you're the only person who's going to be able to do that for yourself. So um, having having that has been a big a big change in my, in my my perspective and being able to look and see. Uh, and, and again, almost very selfishly, how can you use your contacts? How can you use the people you know? How can you? Uh, I'm not great at marketing, but how can you market your experience and actually, you know, take advantage of that experience? Um, you know, I had an interesting conversation up here on camp the other day with with a couple of the coaches around that that um, almost responsibility to promote your profession um, mm-hmm. and how you know, as coaches, as S and C coaches, as sports scientists, we're we're just seen and we're quite happy to sit in the background. Yeah. Um, I don't ever think we should be, you know, front and center in the face of the team by any means. But I think um, we've got a real responsibility to promote our profession and, and I suppose, increase the awareness of what we do and how that's different for, to other professions. Um, and, and I'm not, I'm not bagging personal trainers here, but the amount of times I get told I'm a personal trainer and I'm like, oh, yeah. Yeah, no, not really. Yeah. <laughs> but um, it, it's just different. But that's that's the, you know, that's the public perception of what what we do. You know, we get out and blow a whistle and run people around the field. And I like to think there's a lot more to it than that. Um, so, you know, trying to, trying to promote that out in, uh, out in the public domain, but also, also within sport is certainly a, uh, it's a challenge, but it's something I take very, um, very much to heart personally around, you know, how we, how we should be viewed as a profession altogether. So when you say sort of promote your, your role, you mentioned two prong, you mentioned promoting the importance of the role inside of sport or maybe inside of the club itself that you're working in and then, and then publicly. I think, um, yeah, I wanted to get your thoughts on how, how best or, or how you might be going about promoting your role inside of a sport or inside of, you know, when you speak about its importance to the yeah. profession, are you more focused on, okay, I want, I want this role and what I do to be seen as more important by the entire profession or is it more um, somewhat around job security in that I want to make sure that people inside of my organization know the importance uh, that, I'm, that I'm adding? Yeah, I, th- I think, I think they're, just, uh, they're just linked completely. You know, yeah. I think if, if, you know, it's interesting coming into different sports with the, the uh, like perception of what the high performance manager brings, um, yeah. whether that be in an administrative role and how that links into the practitioner role as well. And I think, um, you know, in my in my opinion, from the high performance manager role, we we cover a lot of bases and create that. Uh, a lot of the time, sort of create that glue between the the different departments. Um, and it's still too often you go into you go into clubs, you go into um, organisations where the departments are very siloed and no one's really bringing them together. So you know, you know that that um, ability of a high performance manager to actually. Yeah, again, for one of a better phrase, or again, cliched, have their finger on the pulse of what's actually going on um, day to day, but also be able to sit back and manage those departments in the right way. Um, you know, I think is really important. Um, so I think I, th- I think they probably go together. I think you, yeah. you create your job security in the fact that you, you, you're providing value, and that's sort of a, a secondary. Um, but also, I don't think the perception of what an HPM really is about, or what can what they can offer, is actually that that readily accepted within sports and i still think it's a developing um profession that way altogether what um, do you mean by that um a lot like coming into sport you know it's, it's that difference between an snc and an hpm really yeah. you know yeah. like again as, as i said before there's a lot more we do a hell of a lot more than just going into the gym or running people around a field or yeah. you know timing laps or whatever it might be um, and you know how you bring together the medical side the sports science side the nutritional mm-hmm. side into that into that big picture um, has always been a you know a big part of what, the way I've seen my role altogether, um, you know. And, and as I said before, you know, each each uh, um, each profession can get caught up in their own environment, and we all think our environment's the most important, whether you're S and C or nutrition or whatever it might be. Um, but being able to take that step back and have a look at the big picture and how it all, how it all fits together, how you know, we talk all the time about integrating the um, the disciplines, but you know, actually doing that is is one of the biggest challenges and, uh, you know and then the consistency of message and making sure we're all working in the same direction um sounds like it should be easy but it, it just isn't um so it's a, it's yeah, a, it's so a, doing that is important yeah yeah look it's a very very hard thing to do and, and for people i guess you know to your point maybe the differences between an snc and a hpm is it, it sounds like it's more the m part you know the the, the manager part but yeah. to, to be a successful manager i guess there's people skills but there's also an appreciation understanding of the the different links that then ultimately integrate for somebody yeah. that is coming through and maybe has aspirations to be a high performance manager. Would you encourage them to either, you know, I've, I've seen people just 
they, they, they spend time, they, they have a tenure and they just learn off the people around them and that gives them enough, you know, diverse skills. I've also seen people, um, you know, go about, they might be a high performance, I'm sorry, they might be a physiotherapist and then they also go get a sports science degree to have yeah. that um, from, a, from an academic perspective, that rigor or, or an understanding of both sides of the coin. How would you best advise somebody to, to go about learning, you know, the, the different facets that then ultimately come together so they can have appreciation mm. for that integration? Yeah, I, I, and again, also think there's, there's a real importance of having an awareness of all all the disciplines, but not necessarily an expertise of all the disciplines. Because yeah. you know, we're all going to come through with an interest in one area, really. Um, so you know, whether whether you're a sports scientist, a physio, an S and C, and you're coming through into the HPM role, um, you can have an awareness. You know, like I, I, in general, like physios have worked under me, sports scientists have worked under me, but I'll never call myself. I'm never going to go and second guess a physio. Yeah. I'm not asking them why. I'm never going to go and second guess a surgeon, but in, in well, surgeons report to me, that might be controversial, but there we go. Um, but, you know, like you, you're never going to be in that position where you're necessarily telling them what to do because, mm. uh, you know, what, what, I always remember one of the things Wayne Bennett said to me, you know, he's not, going to, he's not going to employ people and tell them how to do their jobs because they're the experts. So it's very true. You know, I, can't, I, I might ask the questions why and, you know, might try and guide and how it fits into the big picture. But, you know, bring the experts in and actually let them do their jobs and then integrate it back into the program. So didn't really answer your question there. But, um, you know, so, so I think you, you've got to identify what, what your interest is and your specific role and how you gain um, an awareness of all the other roles, whether that be doing courses or just working mm. with people and you know, going spending time with them and taking an interest in what they do. Uh, and, and, you know, that's part of management is understanding people's motivations and, uh, you know, issues or, you know, you know, whatever it may be within the workplace and how, that, how we can... Um, best protect them to actually do the, the job that they enjoy doing and that they're best at as well. I like that. I, I like sort of the, the use terminology that they have there and like protecting the people. And, and I think a lot of that is to do with just maybe a, a personal ego check and understanding that you, you know, you might be the head of the program, but you're not the, the head of all knowledge. I, I, I really yeah. like that. Um, obviously I, I can, I can hear by your accent that, that you're not from the, the, the Southern hemisphere, uh, but no. I do, and I do want to talk about your, your dual roles at times, right? So the, the time that you spent heading up the, the, uh, high performance program for the, the England rugby league program, yep. um, and then maybe then how you go about balancing that with the roles and responsibilities that you had in season here at times, I think there was, there was Firebirds responsibilities and then Broncos responsibilities. How do you go about balancing that? I, I, I see that. Maybe the seasons might be complementary, mm. but I understand. Um, of course, it'd still have to be work um, during that time period. So, how how'd you how'd you go about doing that? Yeah, no, I mean that, that definitely was a challenge, and it's um, you know I think probably did uh, would have would have been five years from memory. <laughs> so it starts to blur after a while. It's dreadful, isn't it? Getting old, <laughs> um, but it's sort of five, like five years, I think, with the, with you know doing doing those dual roles with the um, with the England side and and the Broncos. And, um, you know, really it became, it became a, a 12 month job, you know, so you, the time you, your time you tend to have off post season from the NRL was the time you were going on tour, mm. um, you know, with those teams and obviously you're preparing to go on tour. So it, it, that clash between, well, hopefully going into finals with the NRL and, and preparing a tour that might start a week after you finish the finals, um, was, was, it was an interesting challenge and, it, and, um, you know, that ability to prioritize your time and your effort was you know something I sort of learned along the way um it just made for a busy time but it was an enjoyable time so yeah. it's um you know there's, there's no doubt you know when you look at the hours you work anyway in sport you know you're working plenty of hours so there was time there was times going through finals when you just you know you know, you know you had to put your priority into the team you know you had to be ready for a camp and there's so many certain things you had to do and be ready for there uh, and then that's forgetting about families and all that kind of thing so you know life became busy but um you know, it's, it's an enjoyable part of it. And it's just, I'm, I tend to be someone who can prioritize my time uh, and I can sort of switch off from one thing and just move on to the next thing relatively comfortably. Um, but, it, but yeah, it absolutely was a challenge. And then, you know, while you're away on tour, still communicating with the team yeah. back home, we're starting preseason training again. So, um, and again, part of that is having the staff that you're, you're confident with that can do it. And you go back to that point about the ego, like as much as I think I can do it better than anyone, I'm sure they can do it pretty well as well. So it's, um, you know, it's making sure you've got that confidence and that ability. And, and, and I think as a, as a management style, from my perspective, it was very important for me that the staff that I worked with had the confidence that they could just go and do the job. Mm. Um, I was looking over their shoulder all the time. And, you know, they had that, you know, given that, that confidence and responsibility to say, yeah, look, I'm, 
I not, might not be there. I might still talk to you, but you're, you know, you go, it's your little baby, go for it. You know, so, um, you know, so that was, that was key. Um, and a couple of times, you know, you come back and there's a few bits you got to sort out and, uh, and again, it's just, it's, it's challenging, but it's, it's a good challenge. It's an exciting challenge. Well, for, the, for those that, that maybe aren't aware that they're, and, but are considering, you know, quote unquote, plan B, uh, I'm, I'm interested in the, was that uh, a, a complimentary plan B? Obviously, that seems like there's a bottleneck in the preparation for a camp and then potential finals at that time. But for somebody, mm -hmm. you know, you, it would have been a nice opportunity at times for you to travel back back home to the Northern Hemisphere and that, yeah, that would have been really, yeah. you know, complimentary and su suitable to, for your lifestyle. For someone yeah. similar who might want to be traveling or whether for personal reasons or just, just, just for, for their own, um, their own reasons, is that something that you would encourage people to do is to have that sort of sync up or, and try to try, or, or is it just a matter of just get a plan B and, and make sure that, it, that it's, yeah. a, that's a good one? I don't think I'd, you know, I wouldn't necessarily call the England side a plan B. Um, you know, because it, it was very complimentary. And the fact that yeah. I was working with the same coach, you know, that, that helps as well. So, you know, yeah. it was very sort of smooth sailing in that way. Um, there's, there's no doubt going on tours with teams is, you know, it's great to get around the world and go to different places and see different things. And, you know, you learn so much when you get into a group like that. Um, mm. So, you know, you bring your staff from different clubs, you bring your players from different clubs. Um, and as much as you're away from your, your, your own environment, you, you just bring so much more back. Uh, and you know the conversations you have when you're sitting in a hotel you, you just you, you just do learn so much um so it's 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 really valuable i think as a you know i I'm a, i don't tend to go and do a lot of formal education um you know so it's sort of you still do the courses and so on but you know I've, i really find the value in going spending time with people and just seeing you know how they approach things um so I think, you know, that having that time on camp when, you know, there are times when you're sitting around in, in a hotel and there's not too much to do, you, you know, you, you do, you sit around with a beer in an evening and, and find out what these people do. How would you do this? How, well, you know, what are your challenges? And, and just get a very different perspective on how they approach things. So hugely valuable to do it. I, and, you know, from a, a personal perspective, being able to travel and have those new experiences just grows you as a person altogether and, um, you know, allows you to put things into perspective somewhat as well, I think. It's interesting that you mentioned that sort of that learning through practice and um, getting that different experience. You know, it, it's still within the sport of rugby league, but it's it's different people um, in, mm. in a completely different environment. But you mentioned how much you you enjoyed that a, a transition into you know the the work that you did with the Firebirds netball and then the work that you're you're now doing with swimming. How is that? You, you mentioned that, that that that's a nice change and a nice transition. Do you? Mm. Is there a part of you that maybe wishes that you had done some more? Um, taken on some different roles earlier on or is this sort of just good timing for you you know to yeah I, th I think um it, yeah in some ways but I wouldn't change what I did yeah for the world you know like I had yeah. a great time you know working in the NRL that way and, and, and really learned a lot and appreciated the time um I think it's just different stages of life you know like you know prior, prior to coming to the NRL I worked you know within QIS and uh, yeah. back in England for, through the university and the EIS network so, you know, I had a lot of, they had a lot of experience in different sports there. Um, you know, once you get into something like the NRL, it's, it tends to be all consuming to a certain yeah. extent. Um, but also, yeah, I'd probably say like it, it, the whole plan B thing from that, the, from that perspective, mm. if, if, if we'd been able to tick that along, along the way, um, that probably would have been valuable. Uh, difficult and you know, I was moving clubs every three years as well, yeah. pretty much. So, you know, it, it was always like move on to the next one. So, so yeah, it, it, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't change anything for the world there, and you know, I made a lot of contacts, a lot of friends, um, but then you have got to move on to new experiences, and the new experiences are great as well. So, yeah, I, I completely agree, and 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 having um you know having dealt with a few people that, that do work in the NRL, it certainly is all all consuming, and, and that 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 little merry merry go round that does take place is is um is quite a I guess a difficult one to, to manage um, yeah, from a lifestyle yeah. perspective. So uh, to, towards the end of the, these conversations, I, I like to ask the guests that we have on, you know, if to put themselves back into to themselves at 18 or 19 um, or the beginning of, of, of their education in human performance and, and to begin to think, okay, shoot, if I was to do it again, what would I do? I don't like that question when someone asks me that because I would never, <laughs> I, don't, I don't think that way. But, and if you don't think that way, Jeremy, which I sense from your previous answer that you, that you, you might be the same as me, uh, what, it, what in, in today's day and age, what advice would you give people just beginning their education or just coming out of their education in the human performance realm? What would you yeah. say to them? 
Yeah, yeah. I mean, you, you're right. I don't tend to think that way because I can't, you know, I can't change the past, and everything I've done has led me to where I am now. And I like to think where I am now isn't too bad. So it's yeah. um, it, it, yeah. But you, you, I mean, you do look back, and I like. I, I certainly had a gap in between um, school and uni. Um, I, I think that was very valuable in my situation. Um, I, I, you know, the, the, the tendency is just to keep moving on and going to the next thing, and I need to take a little step back and get a bit, bit of, um, I suppose, a bit of perspective as to where where I wanted to go. Um, my great background at that point was playing playing footy. Very, I always say very badly. I never never quite made it as a footy player, but also tennis coaching at the same time as well. And I think those experiences coaching were, were hugely valuable to, for me coming into an SNC side and that ability to understand more than about sets and reps and. Mm. You know, understand personalities and how to actually get your message across a lot better. So I, I reckon that was that was hugely valuable for me. And, and I've always uh, I've said it to a lot of our students coming through, that ability to go and just coach. In, you know, if if you're going to go and just do personal training courses or go and work with kids, you know, you know, working with young kids is a great learning tool. Um, so don't always think your experience has to be around professional sports or high level sports. You know, that ability to be challenged in different ways and understand how you can change your message in different environments is. Um, it, 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 I think it's absolutely vital as you come through um, because we all know, you know, you can work, you can learn as much as you want off your textbook, but getting out there and actually applying it and how mm. you convince, uh, yeah, I, mean, I, remember, I always say I remember coming into the Broncos and Shane Webke being there at the time and, and, and fairly challenging. And, and he would just be someone who would just test you all the time. So the ability to right. deal with someone who was just. How would he, how would he test you? Oh, oh simple things like, I, I, I tell you, Mel was remember the story. The first, probably three weeks after I started the Broncos. So it was my first, my first step into a full-time professional club. And um, we had Dean Benson and Dan Baker there at the time. Yeah. And they had to go down to Sydney on a, I can't, it was an NRL course of some kind. So they sort of left me, left me in charge and you know, <laughs> little me going in there. It was a bit, uh, a little bit daunting, but you just got to get on with it. And we yeah. were doing, uh, we were doing wellness one morning and right. Shane put, put ones down on all his wellness. And um you know, so I sort of went to him and said, like, oh, what's going on? He said, no, I'm fine. I just wanted to test you and make sure you read it. So he would just do things like that all the time. Right. So just, just, just to actually just make sure you're <laughs> actually on the ball. Yeah. Just always looking for that crack. But, you know, that, that, that ability to actually to work with people like that, you know, because it, it, it can be, you know, challenging. People try and challenge you. And there's plenty yeah. of players over the years who tried to find your cracks and, and, you know, try and get under your skin and so on. Just, just, just for the hell of it most of the time. Anyone, anyone been successful? Uh, no, I'm, I'm pretty, that, that, that I'm, I'm pretty hard to get on it. Yeah, yeah. No. there's a few of it. You've got to find it entertaining most of the time. Yeah, isn't it? So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pretty difficult to really wind up in, in that way. Um, right. I can't take them too seriously. Yeah. You, again, you get to that stage where you've seen most of it. Remember, Jeremy Smith always did. I mean, I, I, great guy, Jeremy Smith, who was with us at the Dragons. Like, love the guy. But if you told him to face one way, he'd face the other way. And just, just, just to wind you up for no other reason, yeah. he'd he'd run the complete opposite direction to the rest of the squad, just, just to prove just a point. But, yeah, and you're just like, okay, man. Yeah, as long as you're doing it, and 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 in, in the end, it was a great professional. As long as it's not compromising what they're there for, yeah. you know, you can you can live with that kind of thing. Um, but you know, like you go go into situations where people they struggle to deal with that kind of thing, and you know, learn yeah. to deal with personalities and and how you get the best out there. And look, we've all made mistakes along the way. Um, you know how. You, you know, putting people on show in front of teams when you know they don't respond to that kind of thing. How you how you deal with those sort of confrontational moments uh, and and issues within teams, which which inevitably happen. Mm. You know, you look at NRL, you got forty testosterone fueled idiots <laughs> being put in the same room. Life's never going to be smooth sailing. Um, so it's it's you know it's it's a real it's a real challenge that way. And being able to do that, you know, I think that's been one of my skills over the years. You know, like I say, I'm never going to be a you, you talk to me about our coding, it goes right over my head and fall asleep <laughs> yeah, in the corner. Yeah. But you know, like being able to actually bring that team together, that's been, mm. that's been, um, you know, real. I, I find that a really good challenge, but also really satisfying. Um, you know, so, so long answer, long answer that way. But you know, looking at how you can develop your skills through uni, and I say whether that be going, doing PT, working with kids, whatever, whatever it might be, I think is a real key way of doing it. And I think I was lucky enough to do that early on. Um, and I think I, I, I like having a perspective. You know, I went and travelled in between. I came and played mm -hmm. footy in Australia from England. You know, so just getting out and learning to be um, learning to be independent and learning to look after yourself and having you know developing all those skills of you know whether it be resilience or you know whatever we want to call it now. Yeah. 
um, I think that's a really, really important thing to do in some way. Yeah, you know, so. Just, just, yeah, just be yeah, no, no changes, but important. Yeah, no, I, I appreciate that answer. And, and there's a few things that you mentioned there around ed education and, and university. And um, I, I'm, I'm interested in your answer because you, you, you seem to be an, a very practical um, type of learner, as you mentioned, and, and someone who um, really enjoys coaching and really enjoys management of people. There is a, there is a, but I notice that you have been close with a couple of clubs and organisations that have, you know, strong partnerships with universities, and you would have seen that there's a, there's a trend whereby, you know, there are some people just saying that even the Edith Cowan high performance uh, masters in strength and conditioning isn't enough, and you need to get a PhD. That's sort of actually, you know, to speak from experience, that's that's what I was told. Uh, I was told, hey, you're yeah. not going to get a job unless you get a PhD which was one of the reasons why I sort of shifted and started looking more at sports technology and other roles in sport. Cause that, that ain't me. Um, uh, but so I'm, I'm interested to hear your, your perspective on that because it's not like there's not coaches that are, that are working in industry um, that are sort of your late twenties that just have a bachelor cause they exist. Right. But uh, I'm, I'm interested in, in maybe your take on that type of messaging because, you know, I heard it myself and I know that other people hear it that, hey you know bachelor's not going to be good enough masters mm. phd is required yeah i i think it's um it's a conversation we've had quite a bit over the years mm. um you know particularly with and again it's kind of like the old bugger now but particularly with young younger snc's coming through you know do i need to do that and i i'm I, again I, as you said very much the practical side i i value that a lot um as long as you've got a certain amount of knowledge you know we, we the, the ability to try, um to apply it i think is more important mm. I do think now, I think now you've got to have a master's. I yep. think it's, I don't necessarily agree with it, but I think it's just, it just has become that stage where if you, if you really want to, you know, move forward within SNC, you need to have that. I, I found personally, I, I've started two masters, but I've just struggled to actually get it done. Um, yeah, I do struggle with the academic rigor of having to do it. I just want to get it done now. Um, so, you know, me. but going, yeah, yeah, yeah but, you know, that. going for some jobs. <laughs> you know, I, I remember looking at a job at um, Manly um where it was a it was a rehab a junior rehab um coach yeah and they needed a master's so i'm looking at that thinking well if if i wanted like again i'm getting a little arrogant there but if i think i've got enough experience to do the role but um if i'd wanted to do that role i wouldn't have got it because masters was absolutely vital mm. um, so i think i think as a young snc coming through now i think you need to do it and, and you know and a couple of guys we worked with you know they're working through their masters because Unfortunately, I think you need that piece of paper now, which yeah, uh, it's a bit I'm of shame, right? A bit. I, I think so. I think so. Mm. You know, there's a certain amount of knowledge that you've got to have, absolutely. Um, but you know, as we talked about earlier, having those people around you that have the knowledge and can challenge and work with them, and again, recognizing what you're strong at and what you're not strong at, you can't be good at everything. So, I think it's I think it's important, and is that something you enjoy doing? Hundred percent. But yeah. you know, so many people have put themselves through PhDs. Um, almost for the sake of it, because exactly yeah. as you've been told, you need a PhD. And I'm like, you know, do you really? Do you really? But in some roles, yes, you do. So yeah. it's, it's a real hard balance on that one now as to where you want to go and, and what you want to do. Yeah, I guess, uh, yeah, the, the thing for that is there, there are very valuable pro programs that exist and there are very valuable PhDs that exist, you know. I know, I know a few people in the, in the GPS world that have done some great work and that's what they were passionate about and they went on to work in 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 in, uh, in a pro team working with GPS like that, that that's a great great translation there but you're right I, I I just I get a bit disheartened when when you hear people go yeah I'll just do it for the paper um, yeah. and, and I yeah, and I shame. and I and I felt like that as well I, I don't know what what the what the I guess where the fix is right it, is it is it a high performance unit that comes together and then says to HR hey you know we don't care we we want you know, does it need to be a, a master's or a PhD or is it the, the programs that exist and then the industry doesn't have as, uh, enough respect for the, for the programs that exist or is it all just based on context and then you need to filter it? I, I guess, do you have any thoughts on what maybe the, the answer is to that? Yeah, I, th I think, um, you know, look, I think it's very valuable to have your PhDs and masters in certain roles. Mm. Uh, you know, because you, you're looking at, you know, looking at how, that, how you develop into those roles, you know. Yeah. So I think... You know, for me, it's looking at 
if I'm sitting in a team, it's looking at what I want within that team, you know, how that team meshes together. Do I need someone? So you mentioned before that we've always worked with universities because I yeah. think it's important to get that real, uh, you know, innovation and research coming through all together. And that's where that sort of PhD role sits. So we've, we've tried to actually develop the PhD or master's role alongside the ability to have practical application of it as well. Yeah. You know, so embed, embedding our PhDs and it's nothing new now at all. Um, but embedding PhDs and master's students within the program, you know, so they're getting that, that, that ability to, you know, potentially address their PhD research with something that actually makes a day-to-day -day difference within the club environment as well. Yeah. So, you know, so you're not just doing, you're not just doing your PhD for the sake of it. Uh, you know, you're not just coming in and getting experience. You're getting that, trying to get that blend of both. Um, there's always a difficulty with that is, you know, it does come down to money as well. You know, it's, yeah. it's, it's, a, it's another person in there, but it, you, you know, we've had some, like some really good like, talented practitioners over the years. Um, and as, as they've come in, you know, some, some have come in and have been more, more suited towards sort of the background work around, you know, whether it be sports science or whatever, you know, and less suited to actually working with, with, with the team. You know, some have actually really worked with the team and interacted with the players really well. Um, so it's almost like, yeah, let, let, let's get both skills and work out what the right direction is all together. Um, and that's different for everybody. So rather than saying, okay, I finished my uni degree, I've got to go and do my master's now. Well, let's work out where you sit and how that actually applies to, to the individual within um, the environments they're in. Yeah. That's making an assumption they're already within that environment, which is yeah. the hard bit. That, and, that, and, that, and that would be the tough bit. But I think, you know, I think... You know, clubs like the Broncos and, and like you said, there, there are num numerous clubs. I think, you know, nearly you could probably point at every single pro club in Australia that do have some sort of partnership. And if, and if those partnerships are, are in line with what you had just described, then I think we're, we're on the right track there with making sure those academics have, yeah, have a bit more practical rigour. Um, Jeremy, was it? Look, there's, there's very much opportunities. So, so, sorry, uh, so, go, last one on that. Very, very much yeah. opportunities for people who don't like the practical side as well. And I think that's a real, a real skill yes fairly early on in your career to understand which pathway you take. Um, so I think, I, think that's, I think that's very important. There's some great practitioners who come through who aren't that good at working in a pro sport environment, but are really suited towards a, an institute network environment, mm. for instance. So, you know, understanding that and working out where you sit in that is, is um, I think, is pretty important early on as well. And that might dictate sometimes your pathway so that way. And that sort of ties back to what you, I think, you know, that skill is self-awareness and that ties back to what you were saying before around traveling, getting to know yourself and, and you know, you need that skill to figure out where, where your right pathway is. Mate, You're we, not we, wrong. You don't, you don't figure that out very quickly either, but yeah, it, it takes time. It's still going. <laughs> it's still going. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, I, I think, you know, we've we touched on a few topics in and around, you know, younger people and, and, and their development, and their pathways. Is there anything that, Anything lastly that you want to get off your chest or anything that you thought of that, that you wanted to... <laughs> oh, that that's a, a very that, leading question. But... Is, that a, is that a dangerous game? Yeah. No, yeah anything no, else no. you want to get off your chest man, before we finish up here? No, no I, think, I think, you know, quite a few of the things we touched on there have been, like, been really important to me and, you know, working with people coming through. I think, you know, I think we have a real responsibility to, you know, going back to what I said right at the start, to really promote the profession and, and get, get it seen in the best light altogether. And, but also... You know, you, you use the example of law early on. You, mm -hmm. You're right; there isn't that defined pathway through, and everyone's got a difference of opinion as to how that pathway is. Which, which again, look, that makes it interesting. Um, you got, you've yeah. got to embrace that. But yeah. um, you know, finding finding where you want to sit um, without you know not talking about specialising early necessarily, um, but actually finding where you want to sit and what you know what provides that passion. There's there's, there's a huge amount of opportunities in sport now. Um, how that's going to change over the next couple of years will be fascinating to see. But, um, you know, working out where you sit, not expecting things to happen overnight, you know, that's definitely an issue at the moment where there's a, there's a lot of people coming out of unis, there's, there's a finite amount of jobs, uh, you know, the, the issues with internships and uh, there's, a, there's a lot going on there. Uh, but, you know, just getting your foot in the door, um, you know, the best, the best young SNCs I've worked with or sports scientists or whatever it might be have just hung around. And got in there and, you know, asked the right questions and been like, not, not been in your face, but just been in there and said, like, you know, I want to learn. I want to prove myself. Um, and, and, you know, personally, I, it, we cherry pick. We've always done that over the years. You know, like if, if someone comes in and is really suited to the environment and really wants to be um, in that environment is the right type of personality, then they're great. We're always going to give them opportunities. And it's, um, 
it's really important just to get yourself in there and, and, and just do it. But find the experiences that suit you. Find, find what you, you're passionate about and really follow that because it's, it's, it's too demanding a role to not be passionate about it. That's a, a, that's a great way to close, mate. Enjoy the rest of your time in, in Mackay. Thank you very much for coming on. For those that uh, are interested in watching more, you can subscribe up here. If you'd like to watch our last interview, that's down here. For James, Jeremy, thank you very much. Enjoy the rest of your day.